Welcome to Ahead of the Curve, a podcast about the role of technology in manufacturing, produced by Gerent, one of the leading Salesforce implementation companies in the world. Artificial intelligence, known simply as AI, has become a buzzword today. Often with most buzzwords, there's more buzz than anything else, but AI is different. And in this edition of Ahead of the Curve, we're going to examine how AI is making a fundamental impact and is driving positive changes in manufacturing. I'm Chris Henry, and I'm going to be speaking with a couple of experts in artificial intelligence who will describe how it is being applied to the manufacturing sector. Ali Witherspoon is the Senior Director of Einstein AI and Analytics at Salesforce. Her colleague, Tony Cradiville, is a Vice President within Salesforce Manufacturing Industries. Both are deeply knowledgeable on the subject. Artificial intelligence is actually not new. It's been around for a long time, more than five decades, in fact. But what is new is how it's being deployed in all sorts of verticals, and especially in manufacturing. Now, there's probably one question foremost in the minds of manufacturing executives. If we go down the AI road, what can we expect to get out of it? Here's Allie Witherspoon's response. Sure, this is a question I'd love to answer because I really think that AI can have needle moving results in a variety of verticals, but I think manufacturing specifically. So the way I like to think about this is kind of in terms of a progression path. We know AI can be extremely daunting and can feel overwhelming. And so we like to tell folks, kind of break it up into bite-sized pieces. And I think the first step on your journey to AI and to automation is really with analytics. And if you can build a strong foundation in traditional analytics and reporting and business intelligence, then you're well on your way because you have to aggregate your data and clean your data um, in order to do analytics. And so that's a big piece of doing AI as well. And so when we think about just the, the kind of low hanging fruit use cases for analytics, it really all starts with just kind of basic descriptive diagnostic reporting and insights that you need to run your business, like understanding your account health, maybe your product penetration, what is your supply and demand. That's all very simple stuff that you can report on. But I think the second step in this progression journey is how do you start not only understanding kind of what happened in your business, but kind of what's going to happen. Um, and that's where augmented analytics comes into place. So how can we start applying some AI to those traditional reports and visualizations and business intelligence to start making them smarter? Um, and there are kind of like a few main use cases here for augmented analytics and manufacturing. One is just kind of basic data exploration. So you can do things like not only understand, oh, I, I see a spike in my sales last month, but you can understand why did our sales increase last month? Was there something that we did? Um, was there a trend in that data that led to that spike? So you're sifting through millions, sometimes billions of rows of data and really exploring that data to understand why something happened. So that's data exploration. The second kind of augmented analytics use case are what we call like what if scenarios. So that's when you can actually test different hypotheses in your business and actually model out what is going to happen if you tweak certain variables and pull certain levers. So it allows you to essentially try new ideas and make educated guesses about what's going to happen in your business. So you're kind of taking what you learn from data exploration, like why did our sales increase? And then we're saying, well, what happens if I offer a discount? Will that make things increase even more? And so that's kind of the, the lever pulling that I was talking about. And then the third use case for um, augmented analytics would be kind of time series forecast. And I know this is extremely relevant um, in the manufacturing sector because uh, manufacturers are looking to forecast whatever they can. How do we plan ahead? How do we get out ahead of our business? Um, and we can actually feed our AI models information about our business, like our pricing plans, our discounting plans. And the AI model can predict things like your sales, um, how much of a certain product you need to produce, um, how that production changes each quarter. So these are all things that we can start to forecast out once we have that foundation of analytics in place. We like to think of it as kind of a bookend metaphor. Analytics are your bookends for an AI project. It starts with analytics and it ends with analytics. If you start your journey with analytics and you know things about your business and what you want to predict, and then you end things with analytics, using analytics to prove out how your AI project is working, you're going to have a really, really strong AI project. 
So far, so good. But should manufacturers regard AI as something that can literally transform their processes, or is that too ambitious? Here's Tony Cradiville, VP of Salesforce Manufacturing Industries. I think it's actually something of both, because I, I, you have some scenarios where certainly AI can add a ton of insight and value that may not be apparent from, you know, just kind of a human interactions in, in these data sets. But uh, on the flip side of it as well, I think manufacturers are so inundated with data that in some cases, AI, you, you know, you take away the, uh, the artificial piece, it's really automated intelligence in a lot of cases. You're, you're able to really leverage and use data sets that frankly, just because of the size of them, uh, you haven't been able to really leverage them in the business. So I think it, I think it can be both. It can be uh, something that is truly transformational, but at the same time, there's, there's really a, a nice automation play there for a lot of companies. The use of AI in manufacturing has not seen rapid and widespread adoption just yet, although that's changing. More and more factories are finding ways to use it with great results, and use case scenarios are multiplying. But Ali Witherspoon admits part of what slowed down AI adoption has been fear. Yeah, I think that that's part of it. And I'll just tell some stories since I've been working on this product for almost four years now, um, the Einstein product at Salesforce. When I talked to customers in 2016, this was before we even launched Einstein, but we would do focus groups and talk to customers. Um, there was a definite fear around AI and there was kind of this reluctance like, okay, you know, we think it's in a, this hype cycle and the bubble will burst. Fast forward four years. Now, when I talk to customers, the conversation has really shifted in a very short amount of time. I think, uh, folks are starting to warm up to the idea more and more that AI is here to stay. It's not just hype and that it will in fact define the next set of winners and losers in whichever vertical you compete in. And so customers, I think, are starting to get smarter about that and understand that it can be the next great competitive differentiator, but there's kind of still some roadblocks to adopting and implementing AI. Uh, we talked about the data one, that's huge. How do you have a successful AI model if you don't have all of your data in one place in a way that can be ingested by the model? So that's, that's a huge one um, that we hear all the time. Just backing up a bit to your point, like how do you even get started? We have a lot of uh, folks who are just having trouble picking a use case. Where do I start? Would it be something like forecasting or predictive maintenance? Um, they just don't know exactly where to start. And we often like to tell customers that it all starts with a KPI. Pick a business metric or a KPI that you care about improving and think about how AI can move the needle there. Start with a metric and then back your way into a use case. Uh, another one just lies with the change management and trust. This is a brand new conversation. A lot of times in order to get an AI project off the ground, there are many different stakeholders involved. You have to prove out the value of the project before you even get started, which means you have to have some sort of ROI to be able to project out to get senior leader buy-in. And so just getting the folks on board who are going to make this possible, but then also getting the folks on board whose day-to-day -day work is going to be changed. So if you are just all of a sudden now going to be sales forecasting with AI instead of maybe the traditional way you're sales forecasting, that's going to affect your sales reps and sales managers. So how do you get them on board with these new changes that are going to affect them? Um, so that's a huge piece of it. And then getting those folks to actually trust the outcome of the model. How do you display AI results in a way that helps the end user and the person interfacing with those predictions really believe that what's coming out of this model is actually true. According to Tony Cradiville, one of the intentions of Einstein AI was to not just remove the mystery and hype around artificial intelligence, but to also make it easy to use and easy to understand. Well, a, a big part of you know our goal with Einstein and the, and the notion of AI was to really bring that to a mass market. It's not like uh, AI is new. I mean, there's uh, this discussions and white papers about AI going back to the 1950s. It's really, the, though, up until recently, that's been the domain of data scientists and, and these, you know, people with, with you know, with a focused uh, amount of uh, knowledge in this area, very high, highly paid personnel, you know, developing algorithms, you, you know, trading patterns for these AI uh, routines that, again, were kind of inaccessible to that, you know, to a normal IT skill set. 
and that's re- that's really what AI is intended to address, or Einstein is really intended to address, is to bring, you know, that type of capability, but democratize it so that business analysts, people with IT skills that are application oriented, can, can really use the tools and uh, fine tune them for their particular business. So that's the idea behind it. Um, now, how do you get started in something like that? Um, I, I think it's, it's really thinking through you know, what's a, an accessible data set and, and, and a, maybe a known problem or an assumed problem. Uh, take that data set, don't boil the ocean, you know, start, you know, using these tools on that. And again, because of the ability to, to, to manipulate these tools, make them accessible to, you know, people with like business analyst skills, you can start, start uh, understanding the patterns that are there in that data. And then over time, work up to more complicated scenarios. If you think of the traditional business intelligence world, you kind of knew what you, what question you were going to ask, right? And you would design a um, you know a star schema and all these you know traditional BI approaches to looking and analyzing data, um, set of reports, dashboards on top of that, right? But you you kind of knew what you were after there. I think the real promise of AI is is taking these large data sets where. You know, frankly, you may not even know the questions to ask, but letting the tools themselves sort out, you know, what are the patterns, what are kind of the unique things in these data sets that, uh, um, you know, again, as a human and with the volume of information that's being thrown at you, it, it, it's, uh, it's almost impossible, right, to sort that out. So, uh, again, that's, to me, that's the real promise of, of uh, tools like Einstein is, uh, you know, finding those patterns that you may not know, you know, what questions to ask. An area of great AI potential for manufacturers comes when ERP systems and a CRM like Salesforce can share data. When this happens, the effect is to dramatically expand a firm's AI capabilities. Here's Tony again. You know, looking at uh, at these data sets as not being separate is a big, big part of what we're we're after here. Now, transactionally, it may make sense for you to break apart these worlds. You know, a lot of manufacturers that we work with have multiple ERP systems, supply chain systems in the back office. As we all know, those systems are take a long time to merge together, to transform, to upgrade. And in some cases, it's it's a never-ending battle. Uh, you, you'll get on one ERP after a multi-year project, and then you'll buy another company. You'll kind of be back to where you were. So in our ecosystem, we tend to see manufacturers use CRM and Salesforce in particular as an engagement layer on top of that ERP environment. Now, having said that, you know, when you look at things like an overall account picture, it's not just the sales process, though. You want to know order status, what the forecast is, um, all these metrics that, you know, fundamentally reside in ERP. So my point is, you, you know, transactionally and architecturally, you may want to keep them split. But when you start to think about them in terms of data, you know, you need to think of them pulling all this together so that the AI tools can access them and make a make make visible a complete picture of what the account is and the interactions at a customer. So how would Einstein AI in particular apply to the manufacturing vertical? So for, for us, we, you know, the way we think of manufacturing and as a vertical is largely in in the front office. I mean, that's our, our bread and butter for applications. It's where manufacturers and, and other customers look to us to, you know, for excellence and for a, a solid point of view on how do we have, uh, tackle these, these uh, problems within a different industry segment. So, you know, for manufacturing, that's the sales process, it's the marketing process, it's all the service processes that go along with it. Now, as companies start to evolve their product sets and their definition of product and what what they actually sell in the market, they're looking at things like bringing in telemetry from products or or embedding operational data, order status, even shop floor status, making that visible to customers. And uh, for us, that's really where, you know, that merging of operational data comes into play. Now you extend that out to, to your supply base, you extend it out to your distribution partners, all these data points that can be merged together and it, it makes it much more valuable for that end customer uh, to have that visibility in place and have it in one spot. And, and how would that kind of a supply chain look? How would it, how would it work if, if it was fully immersed, uh, for lack of a better term, in, in 
AI or even Einstein AI? Well, I think it gets back to that notion of uh, feeding broader and broader data sets into these AI tools so that, you know, as as patterns are are recognized, as, as AI gains insight, they have a just a broader set of information to draw these correlations together. And I, I think a good example could be something as simple as a um, uh, as, as warranty claims. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of companies look at these things as a transactional entity. We're going to take a warranty claim in. We're going to process it. We're going to make sure that um, you know we're paying the appropriate amount for the claim, or or, or you know meeting our SLA on the claim based on what we've committed to with a customer. But if you think about the insight that's available there, it extends a lot to a lot of different areas. It could be a product development, right? You know, the value, you know, what customers are um, experiencing in the field. You know, maybe there's some changes in product development that can help impact that and make it a better experience, make the product more durable, more reliable. Uh, it could be fraud, for instance. You know, you could have maybe maybe distributors colluding on warranty claims and there's there's fraud. And some of this thing may not be you know, truly detectable at a, a transaction level. You have to look at large patterns, large data sets. And that's really, you know, just a simple example where, you know, Einstein can, can play a role there in, in helping interpret that. One compelling reason for manufacturers to embrace AI is the role of demographics and the impact it's having on data within a company. Two seemingly unrelated concepts. You know, there is, a, I think, for manufacturing in particular, there there is a large automation play. And, you know, we, we see that, um, you know, in, 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 even in like, you know, sales organizations, so you take like the sales process that um, the company may have had in place for years. You know, the, the traditional workforce at a manufacturer has stuck around a long time. You have knowledge workers that have been in their, their roles for 20, 30 years. They're very familiar with the product, with the customer. But the reality is that workforce is retiring and in, in manufacturing, it's at a very accelerating rate. Manufacturing is one of the oldest demographics for knowledge workers and uh, uh, across, across all industries. And what companies are finding is, you know, the, the new workforce coming in, the younger generation, um, you know, first, first of all, they're, you know, they have to be attracted to these industries. So they need appropriate tools in place. Uh, they need to be, you know, tools that are accessible, easy to use, you know, what they're used to in their normal life, uh, day, day to day you know, personal lives. But on top of it, the the new next generation workforce is much more transient than what we had in the past as well. So people aren't sticking around in the, in the same roles at the same companies for, for decades. They're looking at their careers as a series of events that are going to go on and on. And what that drives from a knowledge perspective is you have to embed that knowledge inside the company. And all the tools and techniques of interpreting data as it comes in from the customers, it has to be curated for these workers as they come in and out. And that's a huge opportunity, it kind of borders, it's, you know, AI plays a huge part in it, but it really drives automation and knowledge curation for, you know, a workforce that, um, you know, we expect is going to be much more transient than what it traditionally has been in manufacturing. In 2017, Salesforce and IBM formed an AI partnership involving Einstein and Watson, IBM's artificial intelligence technology. Where Einstein AI can generate predictive insights from customer data, Watson can do the same from what's called unstructured data. That's a mix of data that's text heavy or lacks predefined organization. Well, suffice it to say, when two giants like Salesforce and IBM enter into a strategic partnership, the future of AI could be even more powerful. Allie Witherspoon again. Yeah, we are absolutely thrilled to be close partners with IBM. And um, we really saw when we developed this partnership a few years ago, the potential synergies of bringing Einstein and Watson together. Um, we've talked a lot about how Einstein excels at CRM data, front office data, sales service marketing data. Um, Watson's really the yin to our yang because Watson really excels at industry specific 
external data, things like IoT data, weather data, machine data, things that can really augment and supplement that CRM data living within Salesforce. And so the beauty of this partnership is really bringing those two value props together so that we can have that holistic view of the business and of your customers by bringing your data together from all of those uh, multiple sources into one view and then applying AI on top of that. Our thanks to Tony Cradaville and Ali Witherspoon from Salesforce for their knowledge and insights into AI in the manufacturing space. We've only scratched the surface on this topic, and there will be more to come on our show. In the meantime, if you'd like further information on AI, we've got a white paper you can download from our website. The address is gerontllc.com slash manufacturing. That's gerontllc.com slash manufacturing. Ahead of the Curve is produced by Gerent in cooperation with Salesforce. Technical production by Dave Grind from the Acme Podcasting Company. I'm Chris Henry. Thanks for being with us.